Hey guys, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Alex, coming back at you with another CDHF talk. Today's topic is GERD and Barrett's esophagus. You most likely have experienced common symptoms such as pain in the chest, acid reflux, a cough, or a sore throat. But if any of these issues become chronic, they could be symptoms of GERD. And with prolonged, uncontrolled GERD, you have the risk of developing Barrett's esophagus. What's GERD, you ask? Gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we're here today with Dr. Gail Darling and Dr. Jeff Mosco to talk about all things GERD, its relationship to Barrett's esophagus, the benefits of getting screened early, treatment options, as well as advocating for your own health. So let's get to it. My name is Jeff Mosco. I'm a gastroenterologist and therapeutic endoscopist here at St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. My name is uh, Gail Darling. I'm a professor of thoracic surgery at University Health Network and the Crest Family Chair in Esophageal Cancer at University Health Network and uh, the University of Toronto. So GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, is a common condition affecting uh, a very high number of patients. One of the most common uh, things that patients present with, both to their family doctor and to a gastroenterologist. most common symptoms of GERD are acid reflux and heartburn. Uh, so acid reflux really just refers to acid coming back up into the esophagus or the swallowing tube. Uh, and patients usually feel burning in their chest, um, which causes, can cause significant discomfort. Uh, they can also feel regurgitation, so food coming up from the stomach uh, into the back of the throat. In addition to these symptoms, they can also get chronic cough, uh, or laryngitis, uh, or sore throat, or even asthma um, uh, as a result. So people that have a severe GERD, and by that I mean daily heartburn uh, over many years, can develop Barrett's esophagus. Not everybody who has severe GERD will develop Barrett's esophagus but the reflux of acid causes inflammation in the lower esophagus. And the body uh, kind of tries to protect itself by changing the lining of the esophagus from its normal squamous lining, which is very sensitive to acid, to what's called a columnar lining, which is not sensitive to acid. So that is a bit of the problem because if you have normal squamous lining, you'll feel the heartburn, you'll feel the acid, and you'll say, I'm having heartburn. But a lot of people with Barrett's actually don't know they have Barrett's, and they don't complain about heartburn because the lining of their esophagus has changed and it's no longer sensitive to the acid. So that's a problem. How do you figure out who has Barrett's? In addition, we know that there are other risk factors for the development of Barrett's esophagus. Uh, male gender is one. Patients who are Caucasian, uh, again, those we said that those who have had GERD, they, they are GERD for more than five years, uh, and then those with uh, uh, central obesity as well, uh, in addition to age greater than 50, uh, history of smoking and or first degree relative affected. If I was, uh, had a, a patient who was coming to me and complaining of heartburn, um, chronic heartburn, the, and these are the people that keep the, you know, the Rolaids or the Tums in their pocket and they're always popping popping uh, Tums, you know, I would say, first of all, they probably need a better acid suppressing, suppressing regimen. Uh, and I would, I would suggest they speak to their physician about considering a, a gastroscopy, at least one to assess if there's any damage in their esophagus from their heartburn. Endoscopy is a procedure that we do usually either in the hospital or in an ambulatory clinic where we put a camera in through your mouth down into your stomach. Now don't be alarmed, you will be sleeping or partially asleep during this procedure. Um, and we look around both in the small intestine, the stomach, and into the esophagus uh, where we can look for uh, multiple different things including uh, inflammation caused by acid reflux uh, as well as Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus is kind of the major risk factor for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. And adenocarcinoma of the esophagus was basically unheard of until the 80s when we first started, it was first reported, and it is one of the very few cancers, perhaps the only solid tumor that is actually increasing in frequency um, in North America. 
worldwide, squamous cancer is still the most common esophageal cancer, but in North America, Europe, it's adenocarcinoma. So 75 to 80 percent of our patients with cancer have this type adenocarcinoma. And Barrett's esophagus is the major risk factor for that. Advanced screening is extremely important because it allows us to make an early diagnosis. Early diagnosis allows us to treat and even cure patients of their Barrett's esophagus and precancerous changes before they have a chance to progress to cancer or even worse, invasive cancer. Currently, we still take random biopsies in addition to targeted biopsies to look for precancerous changes. In patients who have no precancerous changes, they require surveillance every three years. Um, in those with any precancerous changes or dysplasia, either low-grade dysplasia, high-grade dysplasia, or intramucosal cancer, uh, that's when we consider our more advanced um, uh, modalities for endoscopic resection, and really we call it endoscopic eradication of their dysplasia and the Barrett's esophagus itself. The other reason we need to work so hard at preventing uh, the progression of Barrett's esophagus to dysplasia to cancer uh, is that we know that the five-year survival rate is extremely poor. Any patients who require screening for Barrett's esophagus uh, can be referred to any gastroenterologist or any endoscopist, uh, both comfortable with the optical diagnosis and treatment of Barrett's esophagus. Uh, for any patients that have any alarm symptoms, uh, which include any risk factors or uh, dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, uh, I would consider sending those to a hospital-based uh, gastroenterologist. There are a number of tertiary care centers uh, across Canada that have expertise in the treatment of both Barrett's esophagus and uh, early esophageal cancer. There is a new technique that might be able to be used for screening, uh, which is a, a device that is called a, is a sponge that you swallow, and uh, it's in a gelatin capsule. And the idea is, is that you swallow the gelatin capsule, you take a drink of water, and the uh, capsule dissolves, and then you pull the capsule out because it's attached to a string. And the idea there is that you can kind of sample the lining of the esophagus and see if there are any of these columnar cells. And there's a special stain that has to be done uh, to check for that. Uh, and that's uh, now becoming commercially available in North America. If you're a patient with chronic symptoms of gastroesophageal ref reflux disease, especially if you've had it for more than five years, you should definitely be going to talk to your doctor about it. Um, you know, the first line therapy is us usually a medication to suppress the acid and help uh, treat this. But if that medication is not working uh, or you're having any alarming symptoms such as significant weight loss or difficulty swallowing or pain with swallowing, then you should definitely be asking your doctor if it's time for you to be referred to a specialist uh, who can perform an endoscopy. There are multiple therapies available to uh, suppress acid in patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease. The mainstay of therapy, uh, both to treat the disease and to prevent progression to precancerous changes in Barrett's esophagus, are proton pump inhibitors. Uh, these are the strongest medications that we have that suppress the acid in the stomach and prevent the symptoms of heartburn uh, and regurgitation. Uh, not only is it important to speak to your doctor when you do have these symptoms to consider getting put on one of these medications, but it's important to stay on these medications. In patients with Barrett's esophagus, uh, we keep people on either once or twice a day acid suppressing medications uh, indefinitely. And we talk to them every time we see them to make sure that they're taking it appropriately. The most important thing uh, in treatment is to get rid of the inflammation. So usually that's with medical therapy. Um, proton pump inhibitors are the mainstay of treatment for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Um, some patients are well managed uh, with medical therapy. The alternative would be surgical treatment, uh, what's called a fundoplication, uh, which can be done laparoscopically now. And the idea is to stop the acid injury to the esophagus. Um, and the idea there is to prevent the ongoing inflammation 
which contributes to the development of Barrett's in the first place, but also the progression of Barrett's um, to what we call low-grade dysplasia, then high-grade dysplasia, and then cancer. If we can stop that progression, then we can prevent the, can prevent the development of the actual cancer. If we first identify the people that have Barrett's, we find out if they are in that group that's going to progress. Once they develop um, low-grade dysplasia, we now recommend that they, they be treated. And the treatment for that is to do radiofrequency ablation. Um, and, but that only works if they also have maximal acid suppression, either with medication or with surgery. So the idea is, is that either with medication or surgery, you stop the acid coming up into the esophagus, you stop the inflammation, and then you uh, basically destroy that columnar lining uh, with radiofrequency energy, and then the esophagus heals with the normal squamous uh, mucosa, and that um, theoretically will reduce or eliminate the risk of cancer, and that's been proven to be the case. We have close to 95% rates of uh, eradication of their dysplasia and 85 to 90% eradication rates of their intestinal metaplasia or Barrett's esophagus. In this day and age with uh, family doctors as busy as they are, it is extremely important for patients to advocate for themselves. So if you have symptoms that are concerning you, specifically with respect to your gastroesophageal reflux disease, or if you think you're at risk of Barrett's esophagus and need screening, you need to visit your doctor, talk about your symptoms, uh, and ask them to refer you on for endoscopy or screening. It's important for you to take this into your own hands. I, I think it's important for patients to advocate for themselves and and most patient, people know their own body and they know something they have a sense something's not right or that this is more this is more heartburn than usual or this seems worse than their buddy has or that sort of thing. So I, I think they have to speak up for sure. Well, the guidelines from uh, the American Gastroenterology Association are, are basically, uh, as we've discussed, that is max acid suppression to stop the inflammation and stop the ongoing damage. Uh, but once they develop Barrett's, they need surveillance. Uh, and if they develop low-grade dysplasia, the recommendation is that they, they get radiofrequency ablation. In high-grade dysplasia, they get endomucosal resection plus ablation. Cancer Care Ontario in their new uh, esophageal cancer prevention pathway uh, recommends screening for Barrett's esophagus in patients who have had gastroesophageal reflux disease for more than five years and or frequent symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease on a weekly basis um, and two or more of the following risk factors age greater than 50, um, Caucasian, central obesity, uh, history of smoking, and or first degree relative affected. In, in patients who have had endoscopic eradication therapy, uh, they're followed by their gastroenterologist long term uh, in an effort to both assure that they have truly been eradicated and to make sure they don't develop any new lesions down the road. And so they go into a surveillance program as opposed to a screening program uh, for, for years and years. And so the main role of the uh, primary care doctor doctor afterwards is really just to ensure that the patient stays on indefinite uh, acid suppression with the proton pump inhibitor. We have made amazing strides in both the diagnosis, screening, and uh, treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease, and specifically Barrett's esophagus over the last 10 years. Uh, we have non-invasive and minimally invasive therapies that allow us to detect early cancerous changes uh, and eradicate them and get rid of them before they become a problem. Uh, things have changed for the better and they continue to change with improved technology uh, as we move forward. So I'm extremely excited about where we're at today and think that we're doing amazing work uh, for our patients and I look forward to seeing what's, what's to come in the next five to 10 years. So we're trying to raise awareness of Barrett's esophagus and the, the fact that heartburn is not innocent. I think that's maybe the key message. If you're having daily heartburn, maybe you should seek some attention. It's not, it's not something to be brushed aside. Availability of endoscopy, um, it's just not possible to scope everybody. 
So we have to figure out who should be scoped and we're trying to do some knowledge translation with our primary care colleagues uh, to get that message out. I think it, it warrants um, further support from the Ministry of Health. And in fact, Cancer Care Ontario has put that on their guidelines now. We now have a guideline for esophageal cancer uh, starting back at Barrett's. Uh, so we have included that recommendation that um, patients should be able to get radiofrequency ablation to prevent progression to cancer. There are guidelines uh, through the major GI societies in the United States that talk about both diagnosis management of gastroesophageal reflux disease, when to refer patients for screening, um, and then the management of Barrett's esophagus itself. Um, but there, are, there is a significant lack of these resources in Canada, um, which is why CDHF has uh, taken the liberty of creating this awareness um, uh, campaign. And so I think we're definitely now moving in the right direction, uh, making both patients and uh, primary care doctors, as well as uh, all endoscopists, more aware of Barrett's esophagus and uh, the pathway in terms of referring patients. Uh, Cancer Care Ontario also has done excellent work in uh, both prevention and management of esophageal cancer. And so I think we are moving in the right direction, but there is a lot more work to be done. Mm -hmm.